Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. The glorious company of apostles praises you. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the crowd had eaten their fill, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. It's great to see everybody. I haven't done this Mass very often this year. And one of the little children, when I was visiting the school, said, hey, we haven't seen you. Do you still do Mass? And I said, oh, my goodness. So I'm here Wednesday, and it's great to see you guys. Now with the Mass, usually I would see everybody twice a week, but now with this COVID thing, it messes all the schedules up. Today, we celebrate this great feast of these two churches that were built. There's four major basilicas in Rome. It's St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Mary Major, and St. Um, St. Peter and St. the St. John Lateran. We just celebrated that feast not too long ago. And here we are celebrating buildings, the dedication of these buildings. But why do we do that? We do that to remember what the buildings are dedicated towards. And in this case, it's St. Peter and St. Paul, two great apostles. One was Jewish. Well, they were both Jewish, but one was directed to the Jewish people. The other went to the pagans, the Gentiles. And these churches originally were built in the 300s. So they were built 1,700 years ago. Now, the buildings that stand on those locations now are different. They're much bigger. They're more glorious. You know, through, through God's grace, I've been able to see and stand in those buildings. I've actually seen them in person, and they're, they're just they're magnificent. But hopefully, the magnificence of those buildings only draws to the magnificence of God. God is the one who is magnificent. And in our world today, people don't believe in God. Many people don't believe in God. In fact, they think it's a bad idea to believe in God. And so therefore, they attack those who believe in God. And they, they do it in this country more in a subtle way. They kind of make fun of you or mock you or, or think you're kind of not very scientifically intelligent and all the rest. But for our part, we need to not worry about what other people say. You know, when I grew up, there was a saying, sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can never hurt them. Now, words hurt our spirit. When somebody makes fun of us, it makes us hurt inside. But when we know who we are, it doesn't faze us. If someone says you're a liar and you're not a liar, who cares? They're wrong. If someone cheats at a game, they might win the game, but did they beat us? Not really. Does that mean that they might get credit for winning? Maybe. But God is the one who sees. God is the one who protects us. And so long as we keep rooted in God, we don't need to worry about anything. That's the good news. God wants us to be those people who pursue the true 
the good and the beautiful. And these churches were built on the locations where they believed that the bones of St. Peter and St. Paul were. And back during World War II, when the world was all messed up, they did like secret excavations under St. Peter's Basilica. And they pretty much almost for sure found the bones of St. Peter right where they believed that they were right under the altar of St. Peter's, way down below it, but right under the altar of St. Peter's. And also they believe they have the bones of St. Paul as well in St. Paul outside the walls. Now, Paul, he died because they, they cut off his head and Peter was crucified upside down. Why do we look at this? Why do we think, wow, why do we, we remember these kind of things? Because these guys knew that even if they took your life, we still get to live forever. That's good news. You know, when you look at the world and they do all these scientific or psychological studies and all these different things, you know what's interesting? People who believe in God are a lot happier than people who don't believe in God. That's good news. And why do you think that is? Because no matter how bad things are, we know that God's going to get us through this. This pandemic is really a bummer. It's really a drag, okay? I really miss you guys up here serving, doing the readings, doing all this other stuff, but we're trying to be extra safe, and that's good. But know that you are loved by God. Remember what I've told you, right? Every one of you is an infinitely valuable, one-of-a-kind masterpiece created by God for a mission. And so I hope you guys are praying every day like the rosary. I hope you're praying, God, let me do whatever you want me to do. Because if you do God's will, you will be very happy. God wants us all to be happy. And you know what the good news is? If we look to our heart and we find that time of just being quiet, God gives us this ability to recognize what is true, good, and beautiful. Pretty simple. Because I bet you none of you want your friends to lie to you. And I bet you if you're playing a game, you don't want the person you're playing with to cheat. Right? And so the world is strange because it seems to want to say that, oh, well, it's only cheating if I believe it's cheating. It's only lying if I'm, I believe it's lying. If I believe something is true, well, it's true for me, so that's all that matters. But that's not the truth, and people know that in their heart if they look and listen to their heart. My friends, I ask you to pray. I ask you to pray that God help you see as he sees. Pursue the true, the good, and the beautiful. Because what happens if we decide not to pursue the true, the good, and the beautiful? That means we're pursuing the false, the bad, and the ugly. Who wants that, right? St. Peter and St. Paul pursued the true, the good, and the beautiful. But we need to be humble enough because the devil's really easy at tricking us. Our country right now is so divided. Half the people think that the election that we just had was won because people cheated. The other half believes, oh no, it was perfect, nobody cheated. And it's hard to know what the truth is. And in the end, it really doesn't matter if we put our faith and trust in Jesus. Because that's what's going to make all the difference in the world. And if they discover and can prove that they cheated, we still need to love everybody involved. Because whatever happens, it doesn't matter if we put our faith and trust in Jesus. If those who cheat win, then a lot more people will suffer. We won't, you know, the life will not be good. And if there was no cheating and, and they would lie on the other way, that would be bad too. So we need to just pray that God let the truth be revealed and that we never forget who we are. 
Christians following Jesus, trying to be peacemakers, trying to be people of love, not getting distracted by all the stuff around us, but always pursuing the true, the good, and the beautiful. Because if you do that, you will know my master's joy. Jesus is my master. I try and serve him as best I can. Am I perfect? Nope. Do I make mistakes? Yep. But I know he'll forgive me if I seek his forgiveness. So let us pray that we can give our whole being in service to Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We pray for the church that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples. We pray to the Lord for all nations throughout the world that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest. We pray to the Lord. For Raymond Jasinski, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. That if people cheat, that they get caught, and that the truth may reign and win, we pray to the Lord. That all corruption be uncovered, both in the church and outside her ranks, and those responsible for it lose their power or be converted, so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.